Grace and peace. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, where we are in part two of our journey, the journey to Rome that the preacher Paul makes, and the ship has landed. And it's landed them in Malta at this point in Acts 27. And so we want to begin with a focus on what happens when they arrive there on the island of Malta. But we first go to our focus verse, which is found in Acts 27, verse 24, which says to us, fear not, Paul, thou must be bought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. As you see, we have now made it to land. And as Paul comes on land, there's some amazing things that happens. In fact, this is a shipwreck. It's a disaster. But Jesus can turn a shipwreck of our faithlessness into a show of his faithfulness. Remember, the reason why this even happened was because the ship leaders and the centurion ignored the counsel of Paul, which was to wait and to not leave from that port. This was their faithlessness in God's word through God's servant. But look at what Jesus can do into a shipwreck of our faithlessness. In Acts 28 verse 1, it says, And when they were escaped, and then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. So it's cold and rainy in this shipwreck. This is what happens when we go our own way. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. See, the devil loves to get us when we're down. He loves to try to oppress us when we've regressed. But look at what the Lord can do. In verse four, it says, when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man, Paul, is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. <laughs> they got it twisted. This was supernatural, but it wasn't Paul who was God. It was Paul's God who can turn faithlessness into a show of his faithfulness. He preserves him. In fact, look at what happens in verse seven of Acts 28 in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux. So his, his father, Publius, his father is sick, really sick. So when Paul enters in and prays and lays hands on him, the fervent effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much and he healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island came and were healed. <laughs> so, so the living room turns into a pharmacy, a living pharmacy, a faithful pharmacy where the Lord delivers and dispenses grace on who verse one calls barbarous people. See what we call and who we call barbarians, the Lord calls children. And because they believed and they saw what God could do with that snake and they saw what the Lord did with Pulis, his father, they believed what he could do for them. And this is evidence of what God can do all from a shipwreck. This was not a revival. This was not an evangelistic tour. This wasn't even in, in the broader sense, not in Paul's personal sense it was, but in the broad sense, it wasn't a missionary journey. But look at what the Lord can do, even in a shipwreck. This is encouragement to us that when we recognize our failings, when we recognize our failures and give them truly to the Lord and repent and say, Father, I've made a mess, but you can make a miracle. When we are sick, and it's our own fault when we are bankrupt and it's because of our own prodigal spending, when we are hurt, when we have fallen because we decided to run. Jesus's faithfulness is greater than our failure. When we start personally believing this, we will start then personally giving this to others, that same grace that we've received. 
So that's why this story is so beautiful and it's so powerful because as we go through the story and we realize we don't have a record of anyone who gives an account of, quote, joining the church or even being baptized. But we see the gospel being exercised through the evidences that the spirit warrants that he believes are needed to get the people of Malta to become not barbarians, but believers. The Lord in his wisdom knows when to heal physically and when not to heal, but he always is willing to heal spiritually. The Lord knows in his wisdom when to restore property that's been lost and simply to write it off as a loss. We have no record of this ship uh, being written off through insurance or them getting their money back. But even in the shipwreck of our faithlessness, God is faithful. And if we believe like Paul, we will have no fear. In fact, saying to Paul, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Friends, let's believe. God can do anything with anyone, including you. If you were blessed by this video, praise Jesus. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. There is much more to see and learn on our website at changeministry.org.